Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create this train using one point perspective techniques in the Windows 7 Paint application. All right. Now, the first one you want to consider is our canvas size. And you can see that you can see around this canvas all the way over to here, but then it disappears off to the side, and we can't have that. Here's why, because if we're drawing, we don't want to have to constantly be coming back and using these left and bottom scroll bars to find the edge of our canvas. So that's not going to work very well. So there's a simple solution to that. What we're going to do is resize the canvas. Now this may be different on your computer as far as the size that you use, but I just want to show you the concept here. First thing we want to do is make sure we turn off the aspect ratio. We're going to unclick that. The second thing we're going to do is click on pixels. Now you'll notice it's 13, 14 pixels, and that's far too large for me to see. If you notice your little scale up here, your ruler at the top, 1200 is about as big as I want that horizontal width of the page. And so I'm going to actually type in 1200. Now as far as the vertical, you'll notice if we look right over here, the vertical, the most I can fit is probably going to be about 550. So I'm going to try that first and see what that looks like. I type in 550 and click OK. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. I can actually see the bottom of my page. There's no scroll bars. They've disappeared. And I can see the right-hand side as well, the no scroll bars. And that way, it's going to make it much easier as we try to draw. We won't have to keep on finding the edge of our canvas. All right, that's the first thing we're going to do. The next thing we're going to do is make sure we save this. And so we're going to go up here and left-click on this little icon here, this little arrow and it's going to open up our options and I'm going to click on save and you can save this in your folder wherever that might be and I'm going to call this one one point train now your teacher may want you to name it after yourself so they know who is drawing this but that's fine for now one point train or whatever you want to call it maybe you put your name after that etc I know that's what I have my students do. I have them type their name after the name of the project. All right, and I'm going to click Save. Now, the next thing we're going to do is start this drawing with a horizon line. And we are going to start with about a, a size 2 line. So I'm going to go here and click on the, si the second size. I call it a size 2, but actually you'll see it'll show you the size of the pixels later, and it's not exactly a 2. I think that one is a... I think this is a 1. This might be a 3. Yes, you can see the little sign. This might be a 5 pixel. So don't let me confuse you. If I call it a 1, I'm just simply referring to the order that it's in 1, 2, 3, 4. But as you see, these have different pixel widths. This is a three pixel line. All right, so I'm going to go over here and click on my straight line tool. All right, and we're going to do some estimation. We're going to estimate the diff distance between the center here of our canvas and the bottom right corner. And I want you to estimate the halfway point, which is going to be right about here. And we're going to left click and drag. Now, while I'm doing this, I want you to hold the shift key. You'll notice what happens. If I'm not holding the shift key, it goes wherever my cursor goes. If I do hold the shift key, it ends up constraining it to a perfectly straight line, perfect for drawing horizon lines. And there it is, our horizon line. And I'm going to left click again, hit Control Z to undo. Now, the next thing we're going to do is start by drawing the tracks, and we'll need to select the Curve Line tool. So I grab the Curve Line tool, and I'm going to keep it at the same size. Make sure it's the second thickness there, or a three-pixel thickness. And I'm going to start over here at my vanishing point. And I'm going to use the point at which the horizon line leaves the page as my, as my vanishing point. So we're going to left click here. And I'm going to drag. Now I want you to notice, this is halfway. This point right here represents halfway across the canvas. This point is all the way off the canvas. 
So what I'm going to do is estimate the halfway point between the center and the right hand side and I'm actually going to drag this line halfway between those two points and let it go. Now you'll remember with the curve line tool we have two opportunities to curve this line so I'm first of all going to left click and drag somewhat from the center to drag it closer to the horizon so that it appears to move around so that it's actually curving around then I'm going to all secondly left click again to really smooth that tool out we want that line to be really smooth notice how beautiful that curve is so I'm going to actually drop that right there. As soon as I let go, you'll notice there's a bounding box which allows us to, if we use the arrow tool on our keyboard, we can move it up or move it down. So that's a nice handy tool. If you don't draw it perfectly the first time, you can actually move it up or down using that bounding box. All right, so that looks pretty good. And you'll want to copy this, these curves pretty close to what I have done. All right. With the curve line tool selected we're going to draw our second line of the track and we're going to start again at the vanishing point left click hold the shift key and drag straight down we're going to drag straight down to the end of the canvas right off the canvas and let go now remember we're using the curve line tool so we're going to stretch that line across and we want this arc to be fairly close to our right hand track so we want the tip of this arc to come way out here fairly close to this other track so I'm actually going to drag it out to the other track something like this and then I'm going to let go and I'm going to keep my cursor right where it is and left click again so that I can see the bounding box because I didn't want that arc to move at all I wanted it, this arc to be fairly close to this right hand arc alright then I'm going to left click again to close off the bounding box and change tools this time we're going to use a rectangle tool so I come up to the top grab select my rectangle tool and I'm going to change the size of that since it's only a sketch and what I'm going to do is left click from the peak of this arc I'm going to left click across to the opposite side to the opposite track and then go up and I'm going to go up just above the horizon line something like this just above the horizon line so that when I finish the bottom left corner of my rectangle is touching the left track and the bottom right corner of my rectangle is touching the right hand track now if I click away from this you'll see there it is and that's perfect the next thing I'm going to do is draw a circle and this is going to begin the front plane of our perspective drawing you remember if one point perspective begins with a front plane. Now this front plane actually is going to be made up of a rectangle and a circle resting right on top of it. So I selected my oval tool and then I'm going to start here in the top right corner of my rectangle, left click and drag. Now we're going to hold the shift key to constrain this to a perfect circle. And what I want is for the left and right edge of my circle to line up just above the left and right edge of my rectangle. I don't want it too big. This would be too far over. What I want it to do is line up just above my rectangle. So I position that till it looks good, then I'm going to let go. And that looks pretty good. You'll notice that this box here shows that it's lined up. This edge of my rectangle is lined up with this edge of my circle. This edge of my rectangle is lined up with this edge of my circle. When you have that centered, you can left click away from that alright now that looks pretty good alright the next thing we're going to do is sketch in again using the one point we're going to sketch in another curve line and that's going to begin at our left hand vanishing point we're going to drag it up to the top of our circle right there and then bend it we want to bend this out. We're going to bend it here to the left, let go, and then a second bend over here. That looks pretty good. We want this curve to somewhat resemble the curve of our track. Now you notice we have a little overlapping here, right in this area, but don't worry because we're going to actually make this circle thicker later on. And this line will actually be thicker. So for now that's okay. We're just keeping this as a sketch. We're going to do this again using the curve line tool except this time we're going to start at our vanishing point and end up at the corner the top left corner of our rectangle 
So I make it disappear at the top left corner. And again, I'm going to left click and drag. Now this is just going to be a slight bend. We don't want it to bend so much here. And then soften that bend a little bit by left clicking a second time right in there. All right, so at this point, it looks like a long cylinder that disappears. And it looks like a long rectangular shape, cube, if you will, that disappears. And that's going to be a good framework to start with. Okay, so we can begin to actually draw now. So let's go up and grab the rectangle tool, change the size, and I'm going to start with a what they call a three pixel or I'm just calling it the second line thickness and I'm going to begin here and I'm actually going to trace over this area of my rectangle and I'm actually going to use that with that, that three pixel line thickness and make that a little more thick now that's going to be the platform now if you notice I get this little dot here all I have to do is hit control Z if you get those that's a funny thing about Windows 7 is that you have to left click to end your line drawing and sometimes you'll end up with those little dots and we don't really want those so if you see those dots appearing just hit control Z to undo alright now the next thing we need to do is draw another line just like this one that connects to the bottom edge of this rectangle and again that rectangle it represents the framework of the train that it rests upon. It's the platform upon which the train rests. So we're going to actually, oops, wrong tool, control Z. We need to switch back to our curve line tool, a single line, single pixel thickness, connect back to the vanishing point, and then simply left click and drag down something like this just a slight bend and keep the cursor there left click again until you see the bounding box and then it's safe to move away and click and that gives us a nice platform that curves along with our curved edge of this arc on the track so it makes the illusion that the train is coming around the bend all right so the next thing we're going to do is begin to actually draw again let's take the single line here and what I'm going to do is find the center estimate the center point which would be right in here just below just below the center of the circle Now I want to make sure my line thickness is correct let's go ahead to a three pixel line thickness and find that center point and I'm going to left click down and I want it to actually look as if my train is not dead on straight here. We're just going to slightly bend it to the right. So I'm actually going to come down below my rectangle slightly to the right. And that looks pretty good right about there. And I can always use my arrow tool. So if I click on the arrow tool, I can actually manipulate that over again because we do want it to look fairly centered maybe just off to the right and when you're good when you're happy with it simply left click again then from the peak of that line we're gonna bring it back to this corner where the rectangle meets our track left click again then from that point back up to the platform and then move to your cursor and left click again then we're gonna grab from the peak again back to the left side of the track click oh, see there it is again control Z undo that and then again where that touches we're gonna bring this in slightly and then move across and that looks pretty good and again control Z to undo that that looks pretty good it looks like a nice front edge to our train and at this point we can actually add a second line that comes down into a V just to give it a little bit of three-dimensional form alright something like that it's gonna make it look like a plow on the front of the truck or on the front of the train alright very good now let's go ahead up here grab the 
third line thickness, make this a little heavier, and we're going to redraw that circle. So we need to actually select the circle tool or oval tool, and then position your cursor above the right corner here. Left click and drag, and remember, hold the shift key until we get that circle about the same size that we want it. All right. That looks pretty good. Now, if that's too thick for you, you can always come up and resize. You can make it thicker or thinner based on what you want. There was our original sketch. That's a little bit thicker. I like the three point. It just makes it more bold, or five pixel thickness. Makes it a little more bold. When you have that drawn and you're satisfied with it, left click. Okay, so there's the front of our train positioned and ready to go. So, the next thing we're going to do is finish off this front cylinder. Now, the front cylinder, we want to disappear somewhere in here. So it's approximately, if you think of this as the full length from here at the vanishing point to the top of the train, if this is about halfway, we're going to go about three quarters of the way. Okay, and that's going to be our starting point, about three quarters away to the front of the train. And so I'm going to grab my curve line tool and simply position it three quarters of the way from the vanishing point to the top of the train. So I'm going to draw, hold the shift key, draw my line down to the base, to the platform, that I'm going to left click and bring it out, curve it out slightly here, and then soften that curve here at the bottom until it looks curved like the front. We want that curve to be very similar to the front. Something like that looks pretty good. Now before this bounding box disappears I'm going to change that size to a 2 because it looks a little too thick. The thicker line should be closer than the back line. Now this little dot appeared here. Let me just show you how to get rid of that. Select it and click delete. Alright, so we've got our selection tool selected. Let's go back to a straight line tool and what we're going to do is draw a line actually that starts just below this point. Again, a second line thickness. Hold the shift key. And we're going to bring it up just above the back of our train. Now, it is right here. I don't like this overlap here, so I'm going to use the arrow key and left click a couple times until I get it where I want it. I think something like that looks much better. Then I can simply start at the top of my cylinder. Or actually, let me left click here. I'll start at the top of this point. Holding the shift key, I'm going to left click right over here to the top of my cylinder. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is redraw this sketch line with a little bit thicker line. So I'm actually going to take my curve line tool, make sure it's the size that I want, and I begin here, left click to the top, right about there, and then I'm going to drag that down. When I get it positioned right where I want it, I hold the cursor there, left click a second time until the bounding box appears, and that positions it really nicely. All right, very good. Now, we're going to sketch in a quick line so I want that smallest line thickness we're gonna go from the top here to the vanishing point top to the vanishing point kinda of bend that down just a little bit left click a second time till I see my bounding box that gives me a sketch I can use for the tops of my cargo alright so now I'm gonna to continue to draw and using the curve well, I'll use the straight line tool because I only want to end this box. What we're going to do is draw a box where the engineer sits. So I'm actually going to left click, hold the shift key, and drag down. Now don't worry, I know you're thinking that's too thin of a line, which it is, but while it's still selected, you can see those little points on my line, I can actually come up here and change the thickness to whatever thickness I want. And for this I'm going to take a three pixel line thickness and then I'm going to drag another line from here to the top of it something like this and then left click again alright very good 
I'm happy with that. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is grab my curve line tool and I'm going to start at this second line I'm going to drag a line down holding the shift key you can barely see it there but trust me it's there and I'm going to left click and drag out here and then soften that curve right in there I want it to look I want this curve to resemble this curve and the front curve of the train and then I'm simply going to left click out here then again grab the curve line tool and how thick do I want this I'm gonna put it I'm gonna drag a line down here and again just like I did curve it out and then soften that curve right in here just like this okay and then I'm going to while I still have the curve line tool selected I'm actually gonna left click and drag to finish that off so I'm positioning a second cylinder here and I can actually bend that down slightly left click when I want it and that looks pretty good now I'm just going to continue this a few more times just to get this train sketched out and this time I'm going to take the magnifying glass select the magnifying glass and I'm actually going to position it here and you can see that it brings it into more focus it's a little easier to work this close and actually I could even click it again if I wanted to I think I'm gonna leave it there for now if I need to I can come back and click on that but I'm gonna go back and select my straight line tool because again I'm gonna put a second thing of cargo in here and I'm just gonna alternate between cylinder cube cylinder and so the next would be a cube so left click hold the shift key and drag just above and again use the arrow key to position that exactly where you want it then again left click to, un to finish the line and then simply hold the shift key and drag back to the top of the cylinder left click again to let it go okay and so then I decide how far back do I want this to go and I'm gonna hold the shift key left click oh, control Z to undo that and then grab and drag perfect okay and again we'll just continue to do this I go back to the curve tool shift draw my line left click to curve it left click again to curve it and again this takes practice so don't get frustrated if it doesn't look perfect the way you want it just keep on practicing control Z is the most helpful tool I've used control Z so much as I've gone through these to try to make them perfect I have to oh, see control Z right there I had to use it again so again I'm gonna hit control left click hit it a second time and you can see that bounding box up here you know your lines gonna stay I'll do one more uh, to fix this one up so I'm gonna hit the left click on my line tool drag down hold the shift key bring it just above my cylinder left click again hold the shift key and you can see how this works just a case of repeating that every time alright now that looks pretty good um, maybe I'll put one more just because I can there's a curve tool finish our pattern off with a cylinder curve hold it there maybe move it down just slightly that looks pretty good again hold the shift key draw it straight down curve it out left click looks pretty good grab my straight line tool finish that one off there it is okay perfect alright now let's go ahead in and just to start to give these some form we'll keep it on the three pixel tool and to give our cylinders some form what I'm gonna do is actually let's start at this first one so let's go ahead and move this over a little bit so we can see the first cylinder 
to give it some form we're going to create somewhat of a glare here we're going to actually draw a line from here parallel so this line is parallel to this line and then again pretty much parallel here although we want to make sure these are somewhat heading towards our vanishing point and you'll see how that comes in handy later this is actually going to look like a glare which gives it more of a steely look to our train so we're going to do that on each of these cylinders left click and drag left click and drag I'll move this down now at this point I'm going to actually change the line thickness to a one left click and drag left click and drag all right, same thing here, control Z. And, and that should be pretty good. That's going to create a nice form. That highlight is going to really bring out the steel look of our train in the end. All right. So at this point, we can actually do a little cleanup. So I'm going to come in, take the eraser tool and again the eraser tool you can change the size of it by simply selecting one of these thicknesses but I think this one ought to be good and I'm going to simply left click and drag over this sketched line that we drew uh oh control I hit the right button so I'm going to simply left click and drag left click and drag all right bring this down this takes a little bit of work all right we can get rid of this as well get rid of this as well and actually this line right in here we can get rid of all this Let's shrink that down just a hair very good all right now that looks pretty good okay next thing I'm gonna to want to do is again come in grab my line tool now and I'm gonna use a second line thickness and I'm actually gonna put a gap in between each of these platforms because we know that these are each on their own separate platform so I'm gonna just shift drag up and again the thickness of the platform so this one would come down somewhere over here so I click alright and that seems to give a nice little separation between the cargo cars alright now that looks pretty good now we're going to again redraw what was our sketch so I'm gonna pick a second or a, what I call a second line thickness or a three pixel line thickness and grab the curve line tool and we're simply gonna redraw these lines to make them permanent and remember to curve them down so that they match when you have the curve right where you want it simply left click again so that it becomes permanent alright gonna drag across left click and drag down somewhat I'll keep it right there it looks good I'm just gonna repeat that in fact over here these look pretty good so I can actually revert back to my straight line tool for these All right All right, now that looks pretty good. Now we're going to come in here and erase some of this that we don't need while we're here. Move this over, center this a little bit more. We're going to focus right down in here on the wheels and erasing some of these unnecessary lines. So I'm going to take my eraser tool grab it a little bit thicker and we do not need this line here 
all the way down. We don't need up to the front plate here. We actually don't need any of this as well. This horizon line can be gone. So just carefully come in and erase those lines. We can get rid of this. here I'll probably have to change that thickness so I don't destroy all my lines here but that looks pretty good all right something like that and if you want to fix your line up you certainly can come back and fix up any parts of the line that you think need to be redrawn all right that looks pretty good Alright, now what we're going to do here is position the wheels. And the wheels are a little bit complicated, so you're going to have to follow closely on this. And if it takes you a while, just rewind, use the scrub bar, rewind, and watch the video several times until you get it. Because these wheels are important, but they are a little bit complicated. And you have to follow the steps exactly as I lay them out. Alright, so what we're going to do first of all, select the oval tool. Make sure that our fill has no fill selected, and make sure the size of the line is a two or a three point or three pixel thickness. And we're going to draw our first wheel starting somewhere here. Now we want it to look not like a circle, but an oval because we all know that a wheel looks like an oval at the right angle, and this is the angle we're looking at this wheel. So once I select the right size, so I start here and I bring it down. Once I get it where I want it something like that. What I'm going to do is before this bounding box disappears I'm gonna left click with that four-way arrow and I'm gonna bring it over here where I can actually work on it. Okay. Once I have it there I'm actually gonna click outside. I'm gonna come up here to my selection tool and I wanna make sure that transparent selection is selected so if it is not there's no checkbox here next to it I want you to click on it make sure transparent selection is selected so that when you look at it there's a little check mark alright we want these to be transparent selections alright so what I'm going to do is select this using my selection tool control C to copy it to the clipboard control V to paste it and then I'm going to bring this one down right next to it and try to fit it perfectly parallel to it something like this about that thick looks pretty good alright and then I'm going to come up and grab my eraser tool and so I'm going to erase and if you need to zoom in it might be a good idea I'll zoom in a little more grab the eraser tool and simply erase what we have here. So be very careful and precise. And I'm going to come in and erase some of that. Okay, now that looks pretty good. And if you want to, you can actually come back in with your line tool and just finish off the tops so that they look the top and the bottom look pretty good. Something like that. All right. Now, this is a little bit of a trick. What we're going to do next is paint behind this area. We're going to paint this area, and we're going to paint this area. And we're going to do that using the paint bucket tool. So I'm going to left click, and I'm going to pick for the inside, I'm going to pick this dark, actually, color one this darker gray color and I'm going to simply put the darker gray color in here Then I'm going to left click on the lighter gray and I'm going to put the lighter gray to the outside okay then I'm going to revert back color one is white color two or actually color one is black color two is white one is black color two is white and then I'm going to zoom back out 
actually we'll just come back out here to 200 and I'm going to select my selection tool again select over it control C to copy it and control V to paste it and that gives me a good copy of my wheel that I can actually drag in here and position this way I don't have to do it all the time I can control C or control V again to paste the second copy and look this one's a little bit too big so what I'm going to do is simply position it then use these arrow keys to drag it down and adjust it a little bit we want to use that diagonal arrow there and adjust it so that it shrinks each time so again I hit control V to paste another copy simply drag it down and I'll put this one here and hover until I get that two directional arrow and bring it down use my arrow keys up to position it where I want it and control V to give myself another copy now if you find that your transparent selection is off you're gonna get something like this so you can see why we don't want to use it because it blocks our view we want to actually see behind this shape so we're gonna make sure that each time our transparency is selected alright we can actually position these as close as we want and just continue that process what I'm going to do is copy this the selection tool I'm actually going to copy this one now that they're getting smaller control C and control V and I'm just going to bring this one down control V and continue to do this might have to shrink it a little bit bring it up control V and just going to continue that all the way across Control V. Now I know it needs to be shrunk down a little bit. I'm just going to keep shrinking these down and putting them in where they belong.
All right, that looks pretty good. So we'll stop there, and let's go ahead and get rid of these. So I'm going to select this one, delete, select this one, hit delete, and I can actually come down here and zoom back out to 100%. So pretty good. We've got our wheels in place now. And let's see. What we can do at this point is continue with the top of the train and start to detail it out. Now it looks like we could erase some of this here. So let me go in and just erase some of that to get it cleaned up for us before we begin. Alright, now we're going to keep this V here. Go ahead and erase that spot in the middle. I'm going to change the size of this. Alright, something like that. Good. And don't forget, we can always redraw these lines, or you can hit Control Z if you really make a big mistake. You can hit Control Z to undo whatever you've just done. That Control Z becomes very handy. So I'm going to take my straight line tool, just fix up these lines a little bit. Any lines that I think need to be fixed up. And then this one, hold the shift key, the horizon line. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to zoom back out 100%. Alright, now since we did the tracks, might as well finish up with the tracks. Go ahead and grab the curve line tool. We're going to simply select, actually let's select right here underneath where the wheels would be and as you know the tracks are pretty thick they're gonna get thicker as we come by so by the time they end they're gonna be out here so again left click and drag and what we want is to basically mimic mimic the top mimic, mimic the top line so that it looks like a flat edge of a track. Now I am going to put another one right in here just just because it would bother me if I didn't do it. It doesn't look right so I'm going to actually take a curve line tool and just right in here I'm going to select and drag in and curve. Curve it up slightly. Left click and that looks better. Now you could do it here too I suppose although it's not so bad and that is going to give you the top of the track now let's do this again go ahead and zoom back out and as you know grab the zoom tool we're going to come down and just fix up this track a little bit grab the straight line tool and this track we is actually like a cube so we're actually going to bring it down the thickness of a cube left click out here and then we're going to repeat I'm going to make sure I can see the edge of my drawing I'm going to go back and get my curve line tool from this point left click drag off the page and again that doesn't look quite right because it's not rounded at this point so I'm going to come up here I'm going to round it here near the front then left click and round it here near the bottom so I get it just where I want it something like that Okay, so we've got the top of the track and then the inside of the track. The inside of the track is going to have less light. So when I color it, when I get my paint bucket tool here, I'm going to use this darker gray. Now we can use a series of darker grays and I'll show you those when we actually color a little bit more. But for now, we can use this darker gray value to paint the inside edge of that track, which disappears when it comes around this corner. Then for the top edge of the track, we can use this other gray. So simply paint into that side. Now if you click on this and the gray paint seems to spread into this area, then what you need to do is make sure that this line is not broken anywhere. If that line gets broken, it's actually not going to work. It's going to spread the paint all inside this area. So if that's a problem, just check your line. Make sure there's no break in the line. Okay, now we can revert back to black for our main color. 
and we can zoom back out actually right down here in the bottom corner is where we hit the zoom now that looks pretty good now let's go ahead while we're while we're doing the tracks we'll do the other track as well so we need a top a top track so again we have to use that curve line tool to curve this up and keep it fairly uniform something like this looks pretty good and then the bottom thickness control Z to undo that line and then yes the bottom thickness of the track as well alright and we can paint those pretty much the same darker gray for the inside or actually we could reverse that since the light is going to be coming from this direction the darker gray could go on top and the lighter gray could go to the inside oops the lighter gray to the inside something like this we just reverse that a little bit okay now that looks pretty good alright now let's go back now and start to decorate the front of this train what I'm going to do is simply inside this circle I select my oval tool second line thickness and I'm going to drag another circle I'll start right about here hold the shift key and drag another circle now you'll notice that is a gray circle and I don't want it gray but I want it smaller than my original circle so there's what we can do. We go up to the color and go to black, select black, and you'll notice while it is selected, you could actually turn it to any different colors. As I hover over yellow, it turns yellow. After I hover over red, it turns red. Green, it turns re green. Okay, but I want it to be black. And then I also want it to be positioned in the center, so I'm going to use my arrow tool to get it as close to center as I can. That looks pretty good right there. Before I left click and make it permanent. I'm going to do that a couple more times. Shift, hold it, and again I'm going to bring it up to the center by using my arrow keys till it looks fairly centered. And then click, and then the same thing again, except this time I'm going to start, hold the shift key inside here, and put it to the right just a little bit. And I can actually take my corners and drag those out until they meet, because what I want is this, this feeling of depth all right so that it looks like this is an upper ledge so it's sort of inside there's where the light is going to be with a little bit of an edge up in here all right now we got a couple more details to draw and then we can start to actually paint the train and let's go ahead and grab our straight line tool and we're gonna focus on the top of the train as you know steam trains let off steam so we're gonna build a smokestack here at the top so I left click and drag holding the shift key left click and drag and this should be centered as centered as you can get it Then we're going to take the curve line tool and left click and drag across holding the shift key if that's a little too, if it's disconnected, I'm going to control Z, undo that, and actually bring that down a little bit. And we can move this in the end. So again, hold that shift key. And then we're going to come back to the right, give it a slight edge up, round it off here. And again, this takes a little bit of practice. And you can again use the arrow keys to move it up or down. So it looks something like that. Then we're going to do the same thing. Control Z to undo that mark. We're going to go back, grab our straight line tool, and coming out from this side, 
We're going to give it a slight bell. Coming out from this side, the same thing. Good. And then again, use the curve line tool. Come from one point to the next. Hold that shift key down. Then left click to give it a slight curve here. Left click here, slight curve there. Something like that. And again, that takes a little bit of practice, but you work at it and you'll get it. And then we're going to go back to the straight line. We're actually putting a series of cones here. Control Z to undo that one. Control Z. And then the last is the curve line one more time. Just gonna drag that up a little bit. Second line. All right, that looks pretty good. So we've got a nice smokestack on the back, on the top. All right, let's focus on this car over here. Go ahead and grab the magnifying glass, and I'm gonna zero in. Use my scroll bars to position this box is the one I'm going to be working on. Alright, so I'm going to grab my line tool and basically I'm going to create a window here. So I'm just going to use the line tool to make sure the top is parallel. This top line of my window is parallel to the top line of my car. Left click off. The right, shall I hold the shift key, the right is parallel this right line of my window is parallel to the right line of my car. The bottom is going to be parallel to the bottom of my car. So this line parallel to this line. And then I hold the shift key here to make sure that the left of my window is parallel to the left of my car. Then I can erase, get rid of these lines here. Get rid of this. All right, redraw that line so it looks a little better. Remember, you can always move that with your arrow tool, so that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to use a thinner line here to draw some of the inside details. Uh oh. That was still selected, so it changed. All right, click again, then I'm going to actually use a a one and I'm actually going to imagine that the line comes across here okay you're gonna see it right there okay and I have to erase this part of it and let's shrink that eraser down a little more detailed effect so you notice what I'm doing I'm hovering and then I'm left clicking as I go that gives me a little more accuracy and we can see this line. Okay, so that's the inside of the car. And then I'm going to take and use a rectangle tool and one line thickness. And I'm going to put a window out the back of this car. All right, so we can actually see it looks a little more three-dimensional. So it looks like we're looking inside this window, and we can see the back edge of the the engineer car, and we can see a window out the back of the engineer car. All right, and I think that looks pretty good. We can leave these lines, or you can get rid of them. I actually think they look pretty good. I might even draw uh, a couple more lines just to make it look... Oops, that's not a line. Control-Z go back and grab my line tool. I might even put a few more lines on these cards just to make them look a little more realistic. Something like that. Alright, now we can zoom back out and let's take a look at that. Alright, that train looks pretty good. Just a few touch-ups here on the front and we'll be done with the train portion of this. So I'm going to take my line tool again and I'm going to zoom in to the front portion here. Grab my line tool and we're going to put some grid on the front and let's go ahead and change that line thickness to a 2 
and then draw our next line again try to keep it parallel next line just going to put sort of a grid on the front of this train here control Z get rid of that Okay, very nice. All right. Zoom back out. Very good, very good. Okay. Now at this point, we'll go in and color. I'll show you a little bit about the coloring here. I'm going to come in and I'm going to edit my color. So I have black here. And I'm actually going to get some variations of gray. I'm going to get a gray that's a pretty dark gray for my train. So I'm just going to grab this arrow and slide it up. You'll notice that it actually, here in this box, you can see the change of the hue. So again, this is your value scale. And you can do this for any color, by the way. If you click on blue and you want to change the value of that blue, it's from a tint to a shade, you can do that. But again, I'm selecting black. And... I'm going to drag this arrow up so I get a nice dark charcoal type of black but it's not black and I'll show you why it's not going to be black I don't want to choose black and I'll show you why okay now you can see my charcoal color is right here it's almost you can see if you hover over it says gray 80 percent and this one says black now here's the difference. They look pretty similar, but the difference is this. If I use black, since my lines are black, if I use black to color this train, watch what happens. Let's say I color this black. And then I think, well, no, I want to color it a different color. So I color it red. I want to make it red. Watch what happens as soon as I color that red. Notice that everything that was touching that black area now turns red. Now this is a key problem. And this becomes a problem when you're painting. So remember, don't paint with black. You can take and make your own color close to black but don't paint with black but if this happens to you the first thing you're gonna do is hit control Z to undo that and you're gonna hit control Z again to get rid of that paint color so again remember when you use black you have to be very careful and so what I suggest is using a gray about an 80 percent gray you can barely tell the difference but at least when you change that gray to red it's not gonna change to black Okay, so let's go ahead and change that to the 80% gray. So we can still get a nice dark train color without having to sacrifice. But in fact, I'm not going to use even that dark of a gray. Let's go ahead and change that back to white. I'm not even going to use that for now. I'm going to actually use the darker gray, this charcoal gray, on some of these positions like here and here and here where I want it to be a real dark value not everywhere but just in some of the places I want it to be darker so here here on the fronts of these alright to give it a nice stark strong value alright I don't know if I can even get in there let's go ahead and zoom in just so I can get those positioned with my paint bucket tool, it's really you got to be real careful here. All right, that looks pretty good. 
Now, I'm going to use a little bit lighter value of gray. Let me zoom back out. Use a little bit lighter value of gray, something like this, for the major sections, something like that and like that. I'm going to leave this a lighter gray, or I could even leave it white if I wanted to. Um, this is going to be a darker gray. And so what I'm doing here is just coloring in something like that. So it gives it a little bit of variation in tone. So I've got at least three values, a light, a medium, and a dark value. Now inside, I'm actually going to use a little bit lighter gray for this back wall. And then at the above on the roof, I'll probably use that dark gray again. Yeah, that seems to look good. Makes it look very steely. Alright, now I forgot to put a highlight here. We have a cylinder here. I want to make sure I add a highlight. So I'm going to go back to my line tool and just use a two point or three pixel line again and I'm just going to add a highlight here I'll use a shift key and then another one here just a thin highlight and then another one here and another one here that way and I can get rid of this little spot by selecting it and hitting delete. Okay, and then I'm going to take and add a lighter gray, probably something like this. Oops. To the left, grab my paint bucket tool, a lighter gray, and then a darker gray. Maybe the light gray to the left there. You can even try that here. So it creates kind of a highlight. Ah, that looks actually better. I like that. And then the light gray here and my darker gray here. And that looks pretty good. All right. Good. Now, remember, when you do this window, whatever color you do the sky, let's say we pick a blue for the sky. Okay. We pick a blue for the sky, we're also going to want to pick a blue in there. Okay, but I'm going to undo that because I don't want to do the sky right now. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to do. Uh, what I do want to do is make sure I put some gray paneling in here so we don't forget this. Oops, control Z. I must have hit a line there. And probably a dark gray back here to bring those wheels out so we can actually see those wheels a little bit. They're a little bit light, but if we put this charcoal gray in between the wheels and then maybe lighten it up a little bit, a little bit of lighter, darker gray, something like that. Looks a little bit... Looks a little bit better. Okay, on the front here, let's go ahead and put Actually, I'm going to put a nice dark on this front ones. Actually, let's do that to all of them. I think I look like that really 80% gray. Really punches out those wheels, makes them shine. I like that better. All right, and then here on our front, we'll use this. What do they call this? Looks like a 50% gray. So we're going to click there and there. And then maybe a lighter gray here and here. And then on the front, a little bit lighter gray, something like that. And I'll leave this white for a highlight. So in each area, I'm trying to create different values. So I've got this light highlight value, a medium gray, and a darker gray value. So you'll find that by using those various values, it really adds to the three-dimensional look of our train. Now... What we're going to do here is take this yellow, paint that in. All right, that looks good. And if you want, you can actually add a number. So if you want to add a number, you take your paint, uh, your uh, text tool, simply drag out, type the number one. Probably want to use black, though, for that number one. Drag this back. And 
let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger probably a 48 or a 36 look at probably 48 let's see that and make sure it's on transparent and then hover over it so you can actually move it we'll put that right there in the middle and drop that down a little bit let's see what that looks like go back to home click here ah oh, that looks good we got the number one train coming through alright very good alright the next part of this is going to be to add another vanishing point so that we can put a building in here alright and to do that we're going to use the smaller line okay and again we can always add the thicker lines later in fact I'm gonna start with a thicker line just to save us some time I'm gonna add another vanishing point right here close to my train I'm actually gonna drag from here we could actually make it disappear behind the train I suppose let's go ahead right to this point where the train meets right there and that looks good we're gonna drag not to the corner well actually we'll put one right to the corner drag right to that corner let it go click again and starting from that same point we'll use that as our vanishing point we're gonna add a thickness here now this thickness represents the thickness of the platform because this is going to be a platform and click again starting again from that vanishing point this is going to be um, the platform and if you can't see it now don't worry you'll be able to see it in a little bit okay and then let's go ahead and sketch in some lines here just so we can erase them easier later alright we're gonna erase we're gonna draw in the top of the building somewhere over here and maybe roof line out here and perhaps we'll put another line in later but let's go ahead and draw with this one go ahead and grab your next thickness and what we can do here is decide where we want this building to, to end probably somewhere in here so we're gonna actually click here left click hold the shift key and bring a straight line up then we'll do it again hold the shift key straight out you can start to see this here click again from this point we're gonna follow our sketch right off the page so that we make sure it disappears at the horizon line then thicken this one up as well alright and then we're gonna come in with our eraser tool make it a little thicker even more thicker than that just so it's easier to erase with left click and drag across and get rid of that line and so we can already see this looks more like a building now to make it really realistic again we can take our straight line tool and simply hold the shift key and drag some lines across and again you can start to see how it looks more like a platform here with some these can be boards or they can be concrete slabs whatever you want them to be and I'll probably make that a little thinner as we get past this building actually keep it thick there and then for my next one I will make it a little thinner just because we're getting far off into the distance just put an indication like that so I don't have to do every single one okay and so then I can erase some of this there we go and it can clean that up in a little bit I'll just get rid of those for now go back to my line tool and clean this up holding my shift key drag it out move it down with my arrow key ah, that looks pretty good so again we could put another building in behind this which I'll show you here in a second we'll take and hold the shift key we'll drag back let go from that same point hold the 
shift key and drag up so it overlaps behind the roof. And actually, here's what I'll do. Control Z. I'm going to actually draw right through. This will be the second building. It'll be a building right next to this one. goes off the page, actually. And that way I can come in and just erase what I don't need. Okay. And this can be erased. Alright. Let's control Z that and zoom in. Uh, grab the eraser tool. Come back in. Okay. And then get rid of this horizon line because we want this to be a building here now. At this point, we can actually have it look like that. We'll get rid of these lines too. Now that we're here, a quick way to do this is just to select them and click delete. All right. And so our building, the other end of our building, is going to start right in here. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. Straight line tool, second line thickness right in here we'll start the other end of our building shift I hold it up and I can have it go off or I can have it look like this and again we're gonna to connect to this vanishing point you know, it looks a little bit off but this is how it works and get rid of this and we've got our second building in there Oops, control Z, I don't want to clip my train here. Be very careful. Alright, very good. Now, so we've got a couple buildings here. And this could be a train station, this and we could put a front couple of doors on the front. something like that and then this would have to obviously come from that vanishing point over here so just kinda follow that vanishing point we'd want to make sure it, it kinda lines up points to the vanishing point control Z shift shift Alright, so there's a couple doors on the front of the building. And then let's go ahead and put a window here. Oops, control Z. A window here on the front, maybe where you buy your tickets. Again, using the vanishing point, we want these lines to point towards that vanishing point. So if you have a little extra, you can always come back, use your eraser tool. Come on, quick clean that up. All right, and let's just put um, a little bit of thickness for our window here by inserting another line just inside. and that gives it a little bit of thickness for our window and since it's above the horizon line put a little thickness on the top as well something like that come in and clean this up put a little dot right there Good. That looks better. Okay, zoom back out. pretty good you can actually go in and color that if you want to um, I don't know so just so you can see that this is a building here 
Okay, maybe put a window up there and click outside and use that eraser tool to make sure we can see it that it is a building get rid of this so it doesn't look like you can see through it alright and then grab that too go ahead and grab your line tool again and just clean that up and that looks pretty good you can put some window panes here maybe a couple of uh, lines across something like this just to show that it's um, something like that just to show that there's a window okay that looks pretty good so again you can color that now let's do one more thing just before we go and that would be using this vanishing point again this one here we're going to actually draw sort of a bridge or an overpass coming over this okay so we'll keep that line this is going to be a bridge and this will be coming out of a tunnel so what I'm going to do is left click and drag up holding the shift key and then here we'll do the same holding the shift key then we're going to use a curve line tool hold the shift key come back to this edge and back to this edge we want to make this look like a a tunnel that we're coming out of. All right, well we've got that. Go ahead and select these lines. These are things we don't want. And we can take this again, 80% charcoal. Left click on it. Use the paint bucket tool. That way of gray. And we're gonna take a single line thickness and I'm going to add a couple of bricks over here and I'll show you how that works just to make this look like a brick overpass um, line tool so again we're going to kind of keep it looking uh, let's move that over okay control Z I'm going to draw a couple bricks Brick there. Let's finish that up a little bit. All right, and then a second one. Holy shift key. Hold the shift key. All right, now if we select that, we can actually put a couple of, this is what we call implying texture, control C. We can actually move that around a little bit. Something like this. Now let's go ahead back and make sure that's black. I just noticed that wasn't quite black. So I'm gonna change that color to black. Then control V gives me another copy and I can put another copy up here. Control V gives me another copy and if I put these every once in a while probably shouldn't connect that something like this it's actually going to give us that effect and you can actually if you don't like the size of it you can shrink that down a little bit if it doesn't look good hold on control V if we don't like the size of those bricks we can actually shrink those down a little bit by just taking them selecting them and shrinking those down a little bit alright so again that would be to create the texture the implied texture alright and let me put a couple lines on the front of these glass doors as well
and you could put a sign on the front whatever you want to do some windows up here on the front of the building um, but make it your own all right and then the obviously the railroad tracks the railroad ties we could imply right in here we don't have to draw all of them but I'll hold the shift key and put a few railroad ties in but again at this point you can kind of make this your own work and just have fun with it alright and you can paint it up all kinds of different ways